What would you do if I told you that the coronavirus has a 100% mortality rate? You can engage in hypotheticals, right? I could tell you that, and I wouldn't technically be lying. Believe it or not, shocking, I know, right? Bear with me. 100% of people who get the coronavirus will die eventually. Yeah, because that's how, you know, life works. <laughs> and right now, in the middle of this, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it anymore. I, I used to say, hey, let's call it coronaphobia because that's the real crisis. It's the fear crisis of all of this unfounded fear. Right? Eh, it's It's a little more than that. And we, we have a lot to just oh, very, very legitimately be afraid of right now. A looming eviction crisis, the forced unemployment crisis being extended with a second wave of tyranny. Because we flattened the curve, right? I'm pretty sure we haven't been hearing about ventilators a lot in the news lately. In fact, not I had to look today. Hey, what's up? What's What's up with ventilators? Remember when this thing started? We don't have enough ventilators. We all, and that was the justification for all of the lockdowns, all the shutdowns, all the restrictions. It wasn't, hey, this virus is deadly. Because they, after a while, they couldn't convince us that it was deadly. They said, well, but it's deadly for a few and it'll be deadly for more if we don't flatten the curve and make sure that we never have a surge of cases in hospitals overwhelming our capacity of intensive care unit beds and ventilators. And then, and, and I, I was able to tease this out from the reports, that ventilators were being overused and making things worse in a lot of cases. And in the majority of cases, that maybe that's why, oh, we're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna pretend we never used that as an excuse for anything. Oh, we'll just pretend like the ventilators that it's not a thing at all, whatever. Now, what if I told you that dihydrogen monoxide is a potential cure for the coronavirus. In fact, you know what, I, Jim, I'm, I'm actually really excited to be releasing what I'm about to say on Adder vs. the Man as, as, as groundbreaking medical news for the first time. No one has said this, but it's 100% true about the coronavirus and people getting So if you're worried about getting sick, it's very important that you remember this. 100% of the people who have gotten corona and recovered use dihydrogen monoxide extensively, extensively in their treatment, and it was critical to their recovery. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I just, well, they're, they're, like, I'm, I'm trying to come up with ways to show you, like, hey, Americans are pretty all, all together. I mean, you and me. We're, we're scientifically illiterate. There's a reason they don't want you to learn in, in middle school when you're able to understand like basic scientific principles of logic and reason and process. What is dihydrogen monoxide? Water, H2O. Everything I just said is true. Every, literally everything I just said is scientifically. 100% of people who get coronavirus will die eventually. And they all... Who every single one who recovered from the virus used water extensively in their tree. I mean, it's just like, and, and I, there's. I was thinking about this because this is an old. This is a, this, this is a thing, right? I'm like, oh yeah, it's the the the, the water dihydrogen monoxide thing. You see, there there are examples. You you look for this online. People with petitions, like going out doing man on the street videos. Excuse me, will you will you sign this petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide because you know it has. It accelerates cor cor uh, uh, corrosion, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, it, it can cause suffocation. If it, thousands of people die from excessive dihydrogen monoxide. It, it, it's like, and people sign it. It's just, oh, what is, what's dihydrogen? Is there a common name I might know this from? And, and just being able to put these statements in perspective is so important. And like right now, the coronaphobia crisis, the crisis of, Fear 
that we are experiencing is largely driven by quasi-scientific propaganda. And if you don't know how to recognize it as such, it's really easy to fall for it. It's really easy to think, oh, you know, yeah, well, the people with white lab coats on, they say that I got to do this. So, you know, we got to do this. And, oh, well, people are getting rich. Well, that's unfortunate. But and then you step back and go, oh, geez, why are they lying to us again? Oh, so the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. So the headline that I, I want to apply this to, right? I mean, there's so many headlines I want to apply this to. And, and this is not even looking at the numbers, that, because the numbers that they're giving us are just irresponsible. It, it's irresponsible to, to, to present a number as, as a matter of fact when you know that there are certain inaccuracies built into it. And I'd at least put a big ask, like when you say 140,000 deaths, may include i mean if they were if, if they were just being on like even just mainstream media being honest presenting these numbers when they say 140,000 whatever deaths in the united states so far they put a big asterisk next to it and say may include motorcycle accidents causing death that included someone testing positive for corona in the vicinity you know like just, I just if, if they were honest, you would have those caveats next to all of these numbers. And and I, we, we've we've covered this. I mean, I feel like we've beaten this horse to death with Adam versus the man. That it, it is irrefutable that all of these numbers are distorted, that they're inflated, that there are financial incentives for doing this, that people are getting rich because of this. But specifically, I, 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 wanted to, I want to apply this to a story that we got today from uh, El Pais, uh, English.elpais.com, over half of coronavirus patients in Spain have developed neurological problems, studies show. And you go, well, what? Hmm. Well, that sounds really scary. And this is this has been sort of like, you know, we, we it's like we, we use science and logic to destroy one piece of propaganda after another on it. And I want the American people to just start thinking scientifically, start thinking rationally, start thinking skeptically. And it's, it's like, you know, just bone up on certain basic concepts and practices. You know, correlation does not imply causation. The fact that two things go together does not mean that one causes the other. They could both be caused by a third instigator, right? That's his basic explanation why you can't take correlation as factual causation, right? And with numbers, with skepticism, just keeping in mind that 86.4353, and I'll say this statistic every time, it bears repeating, 86.354962% of all statistics are made up bullshit intended to manipulate you. Surprise, surprise. So just to this story in particular, because you know, we, we, we've been beating down one excuse after another was uh, the, this, the, the virus is deadly. And you go, well, how deadly? Let's look at the actual numbers. And they say, oh, it's this deadly. Go, okay, well, it's, it's comparable to the flu. And pr probably le it's probably less deadly than the flu from what we know of looking at the numbers with integrity at this point. It could be significantly more viral, right, than the flu. And, like, this is something and, – and actually, so there are already studies that say, no, it's really – it's just that it was it was new and we're looking at a, a new virus, and that's why it looks like it's it's spreading – faster but there are plenty of bugs that spread faster but you know look, look, we don't know this one for sure right how fast is it, is it is it is its newness and and virality a unique threat right and we still we, we have to acknowledge that this is a real virus there's a real thing it's not you can't just dismiss the whole thing out of hand it, it is best understood as a funky off-season flu-like virus right uh, a little less deadly possibly more viral and so when they said, hey, it's deadly, we have to shut things down. Because it's we go, well, really, compared to we didn't shut it down, for, we don't shut things down for anything else that's as or more deadly that we know of, right? So we can shut down through this. And they said, well, it's not because it's deadly, it's but because it's, it's deadly for a few people. We don't want to overwhelm the hospitals. We're gonna, we have to flatten the curve. And when that argument didn't hold any water or we flattened the curve, I mean, you, you could – 
and I, I say the argument never held any water to begin with, but uh, even even today, even if you bought that argument, well, then you have to say we flatten the curve. There's no there's no desperate race for ventilators. There's there I mean there, there are no hospital ICUs overflowing. And if oh I saw Adam I saw the news and they showed you this one room of like eight beds with ventilators. Remember we covered this. They used the same shot for multiple news stories all over the world as the example of overflowing ICUs. They don't have it. This is why the, you know, and hashtag film your hospital was a thing. Like there were no overflowing, overcrowded hospitals. Oh, there's people waiting in the hallway. Here's a shot to one person in a hallway. Yeah. I mean, it just shows how easily fooled people are. And again, it's, it's the skepticism more than anything is a practice that needs to be applied here. So the last the last big, you know, propaganda piece that the fear mongers are holding on to right now, it seems, at least in, in you know, my conversations, what I see online is, well, what about the long term health impacts? It's not it's not as black and white as you live or you die. A lot of people who get coronavirus are permanently sick. And that's going to be true, you know, like about about anything. Right. I mean, we, I, I use it's, it's a good scientific analogy for understanding uh, HPV, right? The virus that causes genital warts, where like 90 percent of Americans who are sexually active have 90 percent of Americans have it. And like that's pretty much everybody who's sexually active. Right. And it, it, it's it's mostly benign. But if I told you that, you know, 90 percent of Americans who die, die with HPV. I don't say, well, it's, but it's just there. It's a thing that they have. It doesn't really make a difference in how or when or why they die. It's just they die with it, not from it. But they twist that with Corona, too. So my point is that if you have something that's widespread, if it's really as viral as they say, right, and 80% of patients like aren't even symptomatic, then you're, and, and what's the global number now? Like 16 million cases? 16, 16 something million cases worldwide. Well, 16, you, you take a control group of 16 million people. You know, if, if, if you have a freak disease that one in a million people get, you know, uh, just un randomly, unexplainably, well, then you're going to get 16. Oh my gosh, look, we have, it's not just isolated incidents, Adam. We have 16 people. It's a one in a million thing that you're inappropriately, unscientifically, irrationally associating with the coronavirus. So to this story, new research indicates that COVID-19 is causing a wide range of disorders in the nervous system and may be directly attacking the brain. Now, right away, I'm like, well, wow, that's a pretty, that's a pretty serious charge to level at this little old virus. Now, new research indicates, and we say indicates, they're talking about correlation. Hey, there's some correlation. It could, could you know, wide range. And, and even, it's funny. They're putting out this propaganda and they're not like they, they have enough integrity that they kind of have to reveal how much it's pro like they can't come out and lie directly. They're, they, they have to just twist things. And, it, and it's so easy to untwist them. But then you're like, why am I reading this? Why am I? And of course, I hope. I hope you understand that me bringing you this story on Adam versus the man is not to promote the fear, but to promote rational analysis of these headlines getting past them. Maybe directly attacking the brain. It may be sniffing some kid's hair somewhere while swearing their parents into the U.S. Senate. But, you know, we don't we don't point that out unless we want you to be afraid of something irrationally. Right. The SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus attacks the respiratory system, but there is growing evidence that it also affects the nervous system. Several studies based on thousands of Spanish patients show that most of these individuals developed at least one neurological problem. This man, now so right away you go, what, what constitutes a neurological problem? What constitutes evidence or virus attacking the nervous system? If you get the flu, you have a bad case of the flu, bad enough that you got to go to the hospital, you're gonna, you're dehydrated, you're in pain, you got a fever, 
guess what? You're going to have a headache. You're, I mean, pro right? Like, okay, you might be really lucky and be able to experience all of those other symptoms and be smoking like, you know, magical devil's lettuce and go, ah, I don't have a headache. All right, fine. But you're going to have a headache. Well, guess what? Now we can say you're experiencing neurological symptoms and the virus is really attacking your nervous system. And I'm like, yeah, you can say that, but is that really the way that normal human beings communicate talking about reality? No, this is someone trying to scare you. Now, there might be something to this. There might, and, and what's kind of sad is that to the extent that there might be some neurological side effect risk that's that uh, you know symptom thing that is unique to corona that isn't present in other coronaviruses, right? I mean, when I say corona, we mean the corona brand name for registered trademark. Um, still shocked that the Corona Beer Company hasn't come out and like. Made to, it's the it's not the cure, but it'll make you feel better right now. Kind of like how do they not have someone in their advertising department? Like go, there's probably someone at their office like every day. Come on, guys, we got to embrace this. We got we're going. I'm gonna lose my job. We got to embrace. And everybody's like, no man, that's not politically correct. <laughs> too soon. Too when is when, when is it not gonna be too soon? When they stop using this as an excuse, hey, there's no. There's no too soon. All right. So in a percentage of cases, neurological conditions were even the principal cause of death, although these symptoms have been now in a percentage of cases. So what this what they're saying is that we're attributing neurological conditions that have caused death to Corona. <laughs> yeah. OK. Although these symptoms have been attributed to the body's excessive immune response to COVID-19, some research indicates that the virus is directly attacking the brain. Now, they don't actually substantiate like actual pathways or science or examination. They're just studies and correlation. The Spanish Neurology Association has collated the most recent studies carried out in Spain on the connection between the coronavirus, the brain, and the entire nervous system. The research is varied. It includes investigations on how the virus changes a person's sense of smell and taste, research on headaches and infected healthcare workers, and a study into strokes on 1,600 patients with COVID-19. But the most significant piece of research is a registry called ALBA-COVID, which studies the neurological conditions observed in 841 coronavirus patients in two hospitals in Albacete in the Spanish, Spanish region of Castilla-La Mancha during the peak of the crisis in March. The results published in the specialist journal Neurology a few weeks ago show that 57% of these patients developed one or several neurological symptoms now what's a neurological symptom they actually have to break it down the neurological spectrum is very wide says thomas segura and i'm like tom segura the comedian what a wonderful coincidence the head of neurology at the university hospital of albacete which was one of the two medical centers to participate in the paper according to segura who co-authored the study the most common symptoms experienced by coronavirus patients were myalgia headaches and dizziness now you go okay well headaches and dizziness that's okay that's wrong. but myalgia oh my gosh my, not myalgia they're experiencing now my, myalgia well i mean that woo that that must be really serious right so let's let's go to wikipedia for a second shall we what is myalgia in medicine myalgia also known as muscle pain or muscle ache is a symptom that presents with a large array of diseases. And I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 really, El Pais, you didn't, you didn't just do that, did you? Did you really just do that to me? Did you, did you really, did you really substitute an esoteric medical term for muscle pain to make to try to make me think that this was something more serious than it is let me make sure is that really is my i mean this is we're talking about the media we're talking about a scientific journal like they wouldn't do this this myalgia must surely mean something more complicated than this 
Let's go back to Wikipedia. While the most common cause is the overuse of a muscle or group of muscles, acute myalgia may also be due to viral infections, especially in the absence of traumatic history. Longer term myalgias may be indicative of metabolic myopathy, some nutritional deficiencies or chronic fatigue syndromes. The most common causes are injury or trauma, including including sprains, hematoma, overuse, uh, using a muscle too much. It's funny, they, overuse has to be explained as using a muscle too much, but myalgia, no, we're not gonna explain that, right? Too often, including protecting a separate injury, chronic tension. Oh, so it is that. Myalgia, other names, muscle pain, muscle ache. Really? Really? Miguel Criado wrote this story for El País in their science and technology section. Myalgia, headaches and dizziness. Wait a second, Jim, Jim, where, where have we heard these before? Aren't these... Normal flu symptoms? Uh, yeah, I, he points out that nearly 20% also presented disorders of consciousness, although these symptoms were concentrated among elderly patients. Wait, are you saying that old people, when they get the flu, they feel worse than young, healthy people when they get the flu? Wow, better, better uh, stop the presses for this one. Another 20% of patients developed neuropsychiatric problems such as insomnia, anxiety, and psychosis. I'll bet 100% of those read stupid articles like this one that would have induced anxiety in people who didn't know how to read between the lines. Now, I'm, I'm glad there are people looking at this, right? Hey, hey, you know, we, legitimate scientific endeavor to say, hey, let's coalesce, let's collate, let's bring together all of these studies and say, hey, is there a pattern here? Let's understand it. Let's present it to the public. But then what is this to get attention? Is that like, why are you why are they doing this? Why is it and, and how did I come you want to know how I found the story? Because this morning I was I was like, what's up with the ventilators thing? We haven't heard about ventilators for a long time. Why is that? Why is that not part of the news or hysteria anymore? And and someone said it's not. You know, like I got a response on Twitter, and I've been posting. You know, just mask awareness stuff. Like you know, don't wear the slave muzzle. It's you're contributing to this. You're you're contributing by <laughs> by wearing your slave muzzle. You are contributing to the neurological problems that are being experienced by corona patients because you're contributing to the anxiety, the paranoia, the hysteria, which is worse than the disease itself. So I, I, was, I was asking someone on Twitter, like, hey, do we have anything more than anecdotal evidence of this? Uh, and, and I mean, any long-term negative health consequences from getting corona and getting over it, right? Like, because this is, this is, again, this is the last fallback of the fear mongers. Well, there might be, it's not as simple as that, Adam, you know, and, then, and like, it makes me, I, I fall for it to a certain degree. Like I, what if I don't know, I'm going to err on the side of caution. It's going to make it look like I'm acting out of fear. And in a sense I am. It like, I don't, well, geez, if it lowers my IQ two points, geez, can I really afford to lose anymore? I won't be able to beat Rush Limbaugh in a debate with half my brain tied behind my back. If I do that. All right. I, well then I'll uh, I'll give in I'll give if if I don't like even me like oh, I'll give in a little but you know then I go look at the science just look look actually look at it analyze it question it look at the propaganda question it use a little skepticism and see just a basic scientific reasoning so look at this I mean the dihydrogen monoxide thing CJ if you pull up the Wikipedia there's this is such a thing there's a Wikipedia page about it. The dihydrogen monoxide parody. I didn't know until I was like, I'm going to look around and say, I'm going to look up an example of this. I, the first thing is there's a Wikipedia page. The dihydrogen monoxide parody involves calling water by an unfamiliar chemical name. 
most often dihydrogen monoxide enlisting some of water's effect in a particularly alarming manner, such as accelerating corrosion and causing suffocation. The parody often calls for dihydrogen monoxide to be banned, regulated, or labeled as dangerous. It plays into hemophobia and demonstrates how a lack of scientific literacy and exaggerated analysis can lead to misplaced fears. Yeah. And now what are they hiding behind? It's They're just making mistakes, all these mistakes around Corona. The next article, if you pull this up, please, this is really alarming. This false alarm is really alarming. From the Western Journal, westernjournal.com, health service blames error after telling 600,000 healthy people they'd had COVID-19. Yeah. More than 600,000 military-connected Americans affiliated with the TRICARE Health Plan were told in Air Friday that they had been diagnosed with COVID-19. The individuals and families were in the military health systems each east region, according to military.com. They got an email that said, as a survivor of COVID-19, it's safe to donate whole blood or blood plasma, and your donation could help other COVID-19 patients. That's a good thing. Like I'm, I'm, all, I'm a big fan of blood donors. Blood, being a blood donor, giving blood whenever you can. But this, they're just, they're just spreading false alarm. And now maybe this was a case of a, a totally honest mistake, right? But why did they even make that mistake? Oh, we were just really, really ready to scare people, and then we made this honest mistake. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe it. I mean, you want to know where this is going. And, and I, I could tell you in, in the financial terms, but just let's look at the immediate medical terms from the Associated Press. Virus vaccine put to final test in thousands of volunteers. Yeah, this is where they're going with this. There's still no guarantee that the experimental vaccine developed by the National Institutes of Health and Moderna, Inc. will really protect. Meanwhile, they're locking people. So if the government says you can experiment with something, then you can experiment with it, no matter what it is, no matter how dangerous it is, dangerous it is no matter how much we know that it's going to have side effects from similar drugs in the past. But if you use vitamin C, we brought you this story yesterday. What happened? You get raided like you were cooking meth in your basement. And that's, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, that is not an exaggeration at all from what we've seen in vitamin C IV treatment centers being shut down. Full raids, areas surrounded by police while people go in in full hazmat suits to steal medical equipment. Now, what's, what's the real point of all of this? It's not to give you the vaccine. That's, that's still part of the means to an end. It's to make sure that the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer. All this is. And the thing is, the people who are willing or who want to do that are willing to do some pretty evil things to get there. It's the same people who brought you the military industrial complex and Monsanto and the police state and the surveillance state. And now we have the Corona state. And these same people now are willing to use counter scientific propaganda to get you to believe absurdity so that you will commit atrocities. And the atrocity is just going along with the propaganda without questioning it. Giving up your rights, demanding that other people give up their rights. And all we have to do to inoculate ourselves against this particularly vicious racket is think a little more scientifically. And this is one of those times when, yeah, knowledge is power and we need to embrace it in order to protect ourselves from the storm of propaganda pseudoscience that we are being bombarded with right now.